It's a Mike Tomlin coach team, uh -huh. and we all know somehow, some way, a Mike Tomlin, Mike Tomlin coach team finds a way to win football games. The thing that they're doing really well is the giveaway takeaway ratio. They're plus eight in giveaway takeaway ratio, and that's been the difference in games, whether it's the Cleveland strip sack touchdown, whether it's you know the turnovers in the Baltimore game, whether it's the turnovers that we saw or the late turnover last night. That's what's giving them a chance. But you know, you guys, I'm just going to get straight into it at this point with the Pittsburgh Steelers because, man, I know there's been a lot of rough games, but for some reason, they always find a way to pull them out. Whether you want to talk about the offense, honestly looking a lot better with Matt Canada on the sideline outside of a few throws missed by Kenny Pickett, or the fact that the defense looked the same as it has all year, even without Mika Fitzpatrick on the field, this team looks to me like it has a chance to be a real contender. But what's crazy about that is that even with them having a chance to be a contender, I still think this team has a long way before they reach their ultimate ceiling. But before we get into why I believe that, if you like Pittsburgh Steelers content just like this, make sure to go down and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any videos for the remainder of this season. Okay, so to get back on topic with the Pittsburgh Steelers, this is the team that came into the season with a ton of hype considering all the offseason moves they made and considering how well Kenny Pickett was able to play in the preseason. But I think most Steelers fans would agree with me when I say this. The season has been a little bit underwhelming, even though they're 5-3. and three. That's saying a lot because there's a lot of teams in the NFL that would die to be 5-3, and three, but the fact that there was more hype for this team just shows how much potential this team truly has with the Raw they currently have in place. Whether you want to talk about this offense continuing to get better week in and week out, and I do realize that Kenny Pickett had some missed throws in this past game, but we all got to remember that the dude is playing with broken ribs. But when it mattered towards the end of the game, when they needed to go score, he found a way to drive them down the field and get that done. And then on top of that, we've seen the run game really take a step up, especially in this past game with Jalen Warren and Najee Harris finally looking like the duo everyone knows they can be. And I think that's partly due to Matt Canada being being on the sidelines like I mentioned earlier. Matt Canada in the box can't really talk to his players like he needs to, so when he's down on the field, he has a chance to really talk to them and see what's going on, and he can fix those issues right then and right there, which in my opinion, I think was a huge help. And then we can't forget about the weapons the Steelers have to throw to, because man, in my opinion, they have one of the best receiving duos in the entire NFL, and it's not particularly close. Deontay Johnson came back from his injury, not this week, but the week before, and he's already starting to make a huge impact with around 90 yards last Last night and his first touchdown since 2021 which is always a good sign because once he starts going and you compare that with that guy George Pickens it's really scary speaking of George Pickens I know we didn't have the craziest or biggest game against the Titans but this guy's been playing great all season long and he's probably the biggest reason why they've been able to win some of the games they shouldn't have won he's an elite deep threat down the field if he's open or not because if he's open he's obviously going to catch it and he'll be able to get some yak and score or if he's not open He's great at going up in those contested catch situations and finding a way to come down with the ball, even if he's double teamed. So when you have Deontay Johnson, who's a smaller guy that can get a lot of yards after the catch, or you can throw it to a guy like George Pickens, who can pretty much do everything, I'm not exactly sure what else you want to ask for in a receiving threat. But even with all the success we saw from Kenny Pickett, to the receivers, to the run game, and even to Matt Canada, the biggest positive that I took away from this game was the way the offensive line was able to play. Heading into this season, there was a ton of people hyped that the Steelers were finally going to have a competent O-line with the addition of Isaac Samalu and the drafting of Broderick Jones, but they really just haven't had that continuity that everyone was expecting them to have throughout the first half of the season. But man, against the Titans, they finally showed that they truly can be what everyone was expecting. I don't know what took the Steelers so long to put Broderick Jones in the game, but in my opinion, he looked like a guy that's been playing for a couple years now because when he got in that game, he looked like a pretty solid tackle. We saw him hold up and pass protection pretty well, and we also saw him use him in the run game, getting out and pulling in front of Najee and Jalen Warren, which opened up some massive holes. So when you look at this offense as a complete unit, and you consider the fact that Kenny Pickett was throwing with broken ribs, which made him miss a few throws, I personally see an offense that has a chance to be pretty solid. I'm not saying they're going to be an elite offense or anything, putting up 30 or 40 points a game, but what I am saying is that when they're paired with a great defense, they can get the job done. Done.
Speaking of the defense though, man, you can't make a Steelers video and not talk about it because this defense is just absolutely insane. It all starts with the two edges, TJ Watt and Alex Highsmith, and I think it goes without saying that this is probably the best edge duo in the league, and we saw that once again last night. They finished the game with four sacks, and to be completely honest, they should have had a lot more because they were all over Will Levis all night long. And with Cam Hayward coming back, I think this defensive front is one of the best fronts in all of football. They have the two edges that can get after the quarterback and set the edge for the run. And now they also have one of the better defensive tackles in the league that can help clog up those running lanes in between the tackles. And we all know that every good defense has to have a good front four, and the Steelers have exactly that. Now, the only thing that I hate I have to mention is that Cole Holocomb did go down with what is most likely a season-ending injury, and he was one of the better offseason pickups in my opinion because he was absolutely balling out. He's put up some great numbers this year, so it's sad to see him go, but at least the Steelers do have Quan Alexander and Alandon Roberts behind him that are two solid guys that can still be a great linebacker duo. Quan Alexander and Alandon Roberts were both free agency pickups as well, and they've both played pretty well in my opinion, and we obviously saw Quan Alexander get the game ceiling pick, which is obviously good to see. I can't act like the Cole Holocomb injury means nothing, because it definitely means something, but I don't think it'll have as big of an impact as a lot of people are thinking it might. When you have a front four that can keep linebackers clean like the Steelers have, the linebackers just have to be willing to go downhill and hit the running back, and I'm confident that Quan Alexander and Alandon Roberts can do just that. But if we're all going to be completely honest with ourselves, the front four and the front seven was probably the least of the worries heading into this season because that award would go to this secondary. The secondary had a lot of concerns heading into the season, but with the addition of Joey Porter in the draft, it made a lot of fans optimistic about what could come out of this secondary. And if I'm just going to be completely honest, Joey Porter has proven to me that he's exactly what he was drafted to be. Now, I know he had some penalty issues against the Titans, which definitely hurt the Steelers in this game, but outside of the penalties, which can be cleaned up, he was locking down a really, really good receiver in DeAndre Hopkins. Everyone knows DeAndre Hopkins is one of the better receivers in the league, especially when it comes to being a deep threat, but Joey Porter was using his long arms to stay inside of D-Hop's frame, and he was being physical with him, and he made it really hard for D-Hop to get open. So when Mika Fitzpatrick does come back, and Patrick Peterson can play his normal position, and you have Joey Porter on the other side to pair with Patrick Peterson, I'm really confident in what this secondary can do as the season progresses along. I'm not saying they're going to be perfect by any means, but when you compare a pretty solid secondary with a front seven like the Steelers have, you get an overall elite defense, which is exactly what the Steelers have in my opinion. So when you take a look at this team from top to bottom and you realize that the defense is elite, like I just mentioned, and the fact that the offense is only going to continue to get better with all their guys healthy now, and with the O-line looking better with Broderick Jones in the lineup, and the fact that the offense looked better with Matt Canada being on the sideline, I really don't see how you can't see this Steelers team having a solid chance in the playoffs. I know it's just mid-season and there's a long way to go, but with Mike Tomlin being the head coach, I am pretty confident the Steelers are going to finish the season with a pretty good record giving themselves a chance to hopefully make a run but I'm curious to know how you guys are feeling about the Steelers through their first eight games and with them being five and three at this current point so let me know your thoughts about the defense and the offense in the comments below and with that being said I'll catch all of you guys in the next one